Hey everybody, it's Jacob from Wild Academy, and welcome to day 14 of the Learn GIMP tutorial series. Today we're going to be changing this image into a sketch image. Now I know that there are existing photo filters out there that will change stuff into a sketch image, but all images are different and you're not going to have as much control over how that sketch comes out finally looking. So there are thousands of different results that you can have, but these photo filtering programs are only going to give you the one result and it's also just going to give you an average of all of the pictures, but every picture is different. And so by doing this with GIMP, we're going to have more control and we're going to be able to make these look a lot better because every picture is different close-ups of a face if you have some environmental pictures then that's going to need some adjustments as well so let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up your image and then you're going to copy the first layer right there just go ahead and hit copy now we're going to apply a Gaussian blur filter to this top layer so we're going to go up to filters and again make sure you're selected on the top layer we're going to go up to filters and we're going to go to blur and we're going to go to Gaussian blur right there so how Gaussian Blur works is it takes a pixel, takes each individual pixel, and then it takes the surrounding blur radius, so in this case it's 8, so a single pixel, it'll look at the 8 surrounding pixels, it'll find the average value of that color, and then it'll make that pixel to that value, and it does that with each individual picture, and that's what creates that blur effect, as you can see from here to here. For your blur method, you need to have IIR selected. These are actually going to produce the same result. It just uses different methods as far as how it's going to blur. IIR stands for Infinite Impulse Response, and RLE stands for Run Length Encoding. IIR is better for real life shots like this. Your IR, your R, sorry, your RLE is better for computer generated images, and those are used mainly for kind of high intensity areas. Um, the hair can be considered not so high intensity because the values are really close. What I mean by that is just really large, uh, high intensity like, like a firework would be a good way with a bunch of different colors like a firework picture. And then uh, your blur radius, moving on, sorry, your blur radius, I have it set to eight. It's just saved it from the last, uh, yours will be set different. Make sure to set this to eight pixels and that should be perfect. All right, let's go ahead and hit OK here. Just a little insight into graphic design terminology and technology there. All right, so let's go on to the next thing. The next thing we're gonna do is we actually need to invert this image. Just again, just this top layer, and we're gonna go up to colors there, and we're gonna hit invert. Boom, uh -uh. oh my gosh, okay, hurry. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to take this top layer and we need to make it 50% opacity so that I don't look like a demon monster here. Let's go down to 50% opacity. Okay, all right. Now see how I'm clicking down like this? We can make it easy and we can just drag it with this by clicking there or we can double click in here and we can just type in 50 right there and hit enter. There we go, much better. The next thing you're gonna do is just right click on this top layer and we're going to merge it to the bottom layer below. Let's go ahead and select merge down there. All right, so now it's all on the same layer. So now, depending on your image, you should still see a little bit of color coming in. So if we zoom in here, you'll see that there's a little bit of pink going on there. And you can see this pink here as well. Now with this image, there's actually not that much. There will probably be more on yours, but because this image is kind of dark and there's not too much color to begin with, uh, that's why you're not seeing so much. So what we need to do is we need to go up to colors again and we need to select desaturate so that we can make it all now. Lightness, luminosity, average doesn't matter. Just go with lightness for now and click enter. And you can zoom in here and you'll see that that color is completely gone. So the last step, well, the last step as far as using our existing tools is to go up to colors and we're going to change the levels on this. So go ahead and select levels and you'll see that there is these adjusting slide, like little triangles that you can slide here. And this is kind of another, this is why we do these tutorials to begin with, is to show you all the new tools, not new tools, but to show you all the tools that exist within GIMP and to give you exposure to them. So you may not necessarily be trying to create like a sketched image as you go through these tutorials, or that may not be why you're here, but the point is, is to show you, the point of the whole GIMP tutorial series from Wild Academy is to show you all of these tools 
and then that way you can later use them on your image to achieve something that you're trying to accomplish. So that is a great way to explore new tools in any program is to have a goal in mind. So instead of just saying, here, hey, here's the adjust colors level tool, what we do is we say, let's, do, let's create something of value, something important, or I don't know how important it is to you, but let's just create a project, right? This is project-based learning. And we'll expose tools and show you new tools that way and so that you can see how this could be incorporated in a later project. Hope that's making sense. Well, I, th I, th I think I am making sense there. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this down just a little bit here. And this is your high levels right here. And we're going to take that all the way to kind of the center right here. And then we need to bring this back up a lot more. See how, oh, here we go. Here comes the sketch effect. Pull it. And we're getting it just right there. And again, if we pull this up, you'll see it starts to get really dark right here if we zoom in. Zoom in a little bit. You'll see there's a lot of noise right here. We just adjust that a little bit right there. And then the main one to focus on is the center one right here. That's the one we got to get just right. And then this one, this 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 high levels, it's really touchy. See how I just barely moved it and then it went all gray like that? Now that's kind of cool if you want to do a sketch effect um, that kind of looked like your hand was smudging it as you went or kind of gives it a shaded look. That's kind of cool. So if you were going for that, that would work. But we're just going to try and make it clean here and just go down right there. And then we're going to bring this back a little bit, well, maybe up a little bit. All right, down just one more, just one tad. Am I whispering? Sorry. Okay, so that's probably good. Just a little more. Okay, perfect. All right, so you can just mess around with yours a little bit to try and get. Now, just focus on getting this face right here clear without the noise. You can have the noise in the background because that noise is actually going to be really easy to clean up in the next step. So go ahead and hit OK there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean up this stuff right here because it's kind of it's not really the focus of the image, and so like this tie doesn't really make sense. There's not enough detail to really tell what it is, and also because we've gotten rid of a lot of the detail up here, there's really no point having this amount of detail with the tie. So what you're just gonna do is you're gonna go up to your paintbrush right here, and just select white. Just do it simple, and we're gonna make our brush. We're, make the brush kind of a fade see right here where it kind of fades on the edges I'll just do that one right there let's check our size real quick and uh, maybe a little bit bigger so we can work faster change our size way too big let's come back over here bring that down gotta have it taking some time uh, that's fine 90 whatever I, it just depends on how big your image is to begin with at how large you want to make this and um, again, just make it all white, size, everything's good. So now we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna brush that out, paint that out right there. All right, we're just gonna get these edges right here. There we go. And I wanna leave that color, maybe leave some of that color there. Get rid of that there. Take away these lines right here. Now, don't get too close to the lines here, just the, the, the face right there. Just go ahead and we're just getting the bigger stuff right now. We're gonna go in there with a smaller brush size and really make it look a lot better. And you'll see here from the original image that it was really dark and that's why we're getting this kind of this light effect coming through here. We're not getting enough of those hairs. In the next tutorial, we'll actually go over how to create a brush that will take this hair look right here and it'll fill this in and then we'll fade it out to make it look a lot better. Maybe we'll do it on this image, but maybe a different image actually. So yeah, the next tutorial will be creating custom brushes and there are multiple ways of filling in that space, but we're gonna use custom brushes in, this ca in that case. Oh, zooming in too far. So just work on your image. Go ahead and lower the size of that. There we go. You'll see it, it if you hold down your your 
click your left click button on your mouse it kind of acts like a um, because of that edge being opaque a little bit kind of acts like a spray paint can in a way you slowly approach those edges you can really clean them up clean that edge up there should be working on yours as, as we're going through this. I think that's it for today. I will see you in the next GIMP tutorial series. If you have done your image and you've got it all looking nice and sexy, just go ahead and share it with me on Google+. I have a Google Plus page. and Just share it with me. I'd love to see it. And then if you don't mind, I could share it with uh, some of my followers as well. I'm sure they'd be interested to see the results. And just do a before and after shot. And uh, it'd be really cool to see them. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you guys next time.